Hello everyone. Thank you for joining me today for another fun art project. I'm Miss Amy and today we are going to create this cool colorful chocolate chip cookie still life project. So let's go through our supplies to make sure you have everything you need to create this project. You'll need two pieces of drawing paper. I'm using some water, extra watercolor paper I had left over, but you could use drawing paper if you wanted. And a piece of black construction paper. And just make sure that your papers are about the same size and that will work the best for this project. Also, you will need a pencil and an eraser, a glue stick and some scissors, and your um, colored pencils. And also, usually when we're coloring with colored pencils, we'll need to sharpen. So if you have a, sharp, a pencil sharpener handy, I have one right here that I'm going to use. But if you have a little one that you can sharpen your pencils, that'll work great also. So let's go ahead and get started on this fun project. All right, we're gonna start with one of our white pieces of paper first. We're gonna create our cookies first. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna draw an odd number. I like odd number items used in art. That usually is a good, um, nicer to look at. And so um, we're, you can choose any odd number if you make your cookies a little bigger. Maybe you just want five cookies, seven cookies, nine cookies if they're a little smaller. You choose the number that you want. I'm gonna make them just a bit bigger, so I'll probably pick like seven, five or seven, depending on how much room I have on my paper. So what I'm gonna start is I'm just gonna draw a straight line across. It doesn't have to be perfectly straight because you know cookies kind of are, have a bumpy surface. And so then I'm gonna draw the top of the cookie and that's where I'm gonna make it kind of bumpy. There we go. So your cookies can really be whatever shape you want. They can be slightly different sizes. I try to make them pretty close to the same, but if they vary a little bit, no big deal. Ooh, these look like nice thick chocolate chip cookies. Or maybe yours are a different flavor. You can, you don't have to do chocolate chip. You can do sprinkle cookies or whatever you would like. So I'm gonna be making, I think because mine are a little bigger, I'm gonna just do five cookies. I don't know if I can, well, I might fit a couple more in here. Let's do seven just to add a couple. We want lots of chocolate chip cookies today. And then I can draw one here near the bottom. Perfect. So what we're gonna do now is we're going to grab our colored pencils here and we're gonna make a base for our cookies. Now most cookies will have either kind of a golden yellow color to it. So you can pick a yellow or I have a really nice golden yellow here. I'm gonna go ahead and use that color. And you're just gonna color in your cookies using just a normal pressure. We don't have to do it really heavy or anything. We're just gonna color nicely inside our cookie here. Get that all filled in with our base color. We're gonna layer our colored pencils today to create the look of our colorful cookies. So we have to start with our base which is this golden yellow color. You can use regular yellow if that's all you have. It still will work just fine. Or if you don't have that, you can use a brown and just color a base brown if you need to. That will work too. Now my paper is slightly textured, so I'm gonna have a little bit of texture here on my, when I'm coloring. So yours, you may have a different smoother paper. Um, so you may not have that texture. So don't worry, yours doesn't need to look like that. It's because I'm using watercolor papers. I need, I have some old paper I'm trying to get rid of. So I'm using that paper today. And I'm using a really soft colored pencil so they wear down quite quickly. I have to keep sharpening them. but I love how they color. They color so wonderful. All right, once you've got your base color, you get to pick whatever other colors you would like to add to your cookie. Um, 
I like to add some bright colors. So I have a really cool green that I like to use and mm, this blue color. I might pick a little bit of red and maybe just a hint of purple. So I'm going to grab those. And those are the colors I want to add to my cookies. You could add definitely some different colors if you wanted. And what we're going to do is start with one of our colors. And you're just going to scribble some color on your cookies in random places. I like to choose places maybe where there's a groove in my cookie. It might be a little bit of a shadow area. So I like to just color in there, maybe along the bottom. And you're just going to pick some random. Don't do all your cookies the same. You want to do them kind of randomly. So you might have the color in different spots. You might only have a couple spots or like this cookie, I have three spots. So you're just going to kind of pick where you want to put those colors. And we're going to add more color. We don't want to cover all our golden color. We just want to add a few splashes of color to our cookies. There we go. Now, you see I colored all the same direction with that green. Well, when I grab my, oh, I think that's a purple. We don't want two purples. Let me grab a blue here. I want some blue in my cookies. So I'm going to grab a blue here. I'm going to go a different direction with my blue. So I'm going to color, and I can overlap a little bit. See how I overlap the green just a little bit? You can definitely do that. You can color in the same direction. You can color. You want to do some in the opposite direction just to give a little interest there. Let's see, here's a good spot. Like that blue. There we go. And then I have, I did my green and my blue. So let me add a little bit of red here on my cookie. So just some splashes of red. Kind of a little bit of an abstract feel to it because cookies normally don't have all these bright colors in it but it looks really cool and that's when we finish on our still life i love it there we go and then i'm going to just take my purple and i'm just going to add a hint of purple um, to my cookies not a lot just a little bit I probably wouldn't do two, two more, much more than three or four colors because you still, you don't want to fill all your cookies up. You just want to, you want to have some of that yellow golden cookie color showing through. There we go. So I just added a hint of purple to those cookies. Now I'm going to take a really, I don't have a black in my, um, with me in this bunch of colored pencils. So I'm going to use a dark brown, but you could definitely use black for this. We're going to make some chocolate chips. So this time I'm using heavy pressure. So I'm going to push down pretty hard on my pencil and just make some geometric shapes. So maybe some squares and triangle shaped chocolate chips, big chunks of chocolate. I love chocolate. So this will be wonderful chocolate chip cookies. And I usually just do two or three chips on each cookie, depending on how many you could probably add one or two more if you want chocolatey chocolate chips that would probably be okay There we go. Great. Now you cut them out. 
And we're gonna set them aside because we need to work on our plate for our cookie, for our still life. So go ahead and cut out all your cookies that you have. And I try not to leave any pencil lines. I try to cut, make sure I don't really see those pencil lines. And while we're cutting these out, we can think about a color that we want to use for our plate. You can pick a color that's inside your cookie. Um, I pick purple because I put very little purple in my cookie, plus yellow and purple are complementary colors. And I thought that would look really good because the base of our cookie is yellow. And so I thought purple would be a great color to choose. So I'm gonna go ahead and use purple again, but you can definitely choose a different color if you want. Maybe you have just a little bit of green in your cookie and you wanna use green or red, go ahead and you can choose whatever you color you want for your plate that you're gonna create next. All right, one more cookie and I'll be done cutting out my cookies. So um, when you're done cutting your cookies, you wanna get your other sheet of uh, white paper out and put it in portrait direction in front of you. Um, we are going to create our plate for our cookies. We'll just set our cookies aside um, while, while we're creating our plate. So I'm gonna make kind of a fancy plate because I like that look for this um, project. I'm gonna show you the kind that I created, but you can make whatever plate that you would like for uh, your cookies to sit on. So when I start, I do like an ellipsis shape and that's just taking an oval and making it kind of flat. So I go ahead and just draw a smaller one near the bottom of my paper. Now I'm not gonna make the plate fill the whole paper because it's gonna take up all that room on here and I'm not gonna have room for my cookies. So I have to consider if I stack my cookies and then have my plate, I've got to have room for everything. So I'm probably not going to make my plate any bigger than half the size of my paper. So I'm not going to go any bigger than about halfway on my paper. And that's a good way to, you got to think about all those things before you create it. Otherwise it might be too big and not fit, or maybe it's way too small and then the cookies don't fit properly on it either. So um, once I make my smaller ellipsis there, I'm gonna go up just above and I'm gonna make my larger ellipsis right above that, just like that. I'm gonna erase any extra lines I don't need. So this just helps me get a really nice shape when I do that a few times there. Um, and I do it kind of light so that I can't erase my lines easily. Now I'm gonna make the side. You could just come straight down if you wanted. You can come in. I like to come in and go down just to make it a little more fancy. So I'm going to go in, curve my line, and then curve it right down to the edge of my ellipsis. And the same, I'm try to do the exact same thing on the other side. I'm going to try to make a match. It's like a mirror image. And then I can adjust it if it doesn't quite match. That's where our eraser comes into. And we're going to cut it out too. So you'll get rid of all of that later. And I might come in just a little bit more, make it a little more decorative this time. I think I wanna do that there, I love that. That looks really good. So I'm gonna do the same on this side, come in a little bit more and then go out a little bit. Yeah, I like that. So it's great if you want it. If you need to change yours up a little bit, don't worry about that. Okay, then I'm going to follow that shape of the bottom of my ellipsis and make that a little darker and erase any of those other lines that are inside there because I won't need those anymore. And remember, these will get cut off, so those, weren't, those aren't going to show later. That's looking great. I like this. I like this plate. And then I'm going to make sh define my top, so I'm going to just curve it around and curve it around. Erase all those lines that I don't need. 
Now the top of my plate has a little bit of a um, an indention. So I'm gonna what I'm gonna do is just make another ellipsis inside, following the shape of what's already there. And that gives me kind of a little indention in my plate, like where your plate will have a little ledge around it. And that's what I'm gonna create. So I really like how that looks. So I'm gonna stop there and I'm gonna get to coloring it. So I'm gonna pick out my purple that I'm using. And I'm, oh, I think, you know what? I'm gonna use a darker purple, I believe. Or the lighter purple. I like this darker purple better. All right, so now I'm gonna turn my paper this way. The reason I'm doing that is when I color my colored pencil, I want to go in the shape of my dish. If I color this way, it's not going to help my uh, plate look rounded or um, I want it to look kind of rounded, like it has a little bit of form. So that's why I'm turning it over. It's just easier to do it that way, I think. So, so I'm going to use some heavy pressure because I want to use dark purple where the shadow of my plate will be. See if my light source is coming from over on this side. I want everything on this side to be dark, the opposite side of where the light source is coming from. So I'm just going to start at the edge and I'm going to color very hard. I'm pushing, using some heavy pressure on my pencil to create that nice dark. And I know it's hard to tell because I'm using watercolor paper, so it has that bit of texture in it. So don't worry about that. Yours probably looks a little filled in better than what mine is. And then I'm gonna color dark all around the edge of my plate here. And I might go a little dark along the bottom too. And then the very edge, I can fill that in this way, but I mainly want my lines to be going in the direction of my plate here. Okay, so, and then I'm gonna follow a little dark along the edge because right underneath the, underneath the edge of my plate will be dark because the light can't hit it there. Come down a little bit, dark. Okay, so I'm gonna spread that out a little bit. Now, as I start to get, this is still pretty dark, I'm using heavy pressure, but as I get to the middle of my plate, I'm gonna start coloring just a little bit lighter. So I'm not pushing down quite as hard, still medium pressure probably on my pencil, just so it's a little lighter than your darkest area there. You just want it slightly lighter. You might have to practice this a little bit. It takes a little bit of practice to get this. And sometimes you can go back and fill in if you don't quite. You can add some pressure to it to make it darker if you need. And then as I get even closer to my edge, I'm going to get a little lighter. So I'm even doing it a little bit lighter, as you can see. And then when I get over here to the very edge, it's going to be my lightest. I'm re using really light pressure right now. Almost. It's just barely going on there. So see, you can see the gradual progression of that dark to light. That looks really cool and it looks like my dish is more rounded. So I'm gonna go ahead and fill in just a little bit. I might, you, this is where you can add a little more dark if you feel like you need a, just a little more shadow, maybe right here where this part is creating a shadow. It's a little bit darker there. There we go. Looks great. And then I'm not going to sharpen my pencil. <laughs> All right. And the top, the light is hitting the top of my plate. So it's going to be pretty light. So I'm just going to color that in really lightly, the edge of my plate. And what that creates too is that nice light contrast right with your dark. And it's going to make this top of the pit plate look like it's sticking out a little bit too. And then on the, the impression in here, I'm just gonna go around the edge and make the edge slightly darker. Like it's got a little bit of a shadow there showing that it's a little bit of a, and then the inside of this will be slightly darker than the edge, but not much more darker. Just a hint more darker, but not all the way. There we go. All right, now we take our eraser we're going to use our eraser here and I'm going to get find the edge of my eraser and I'm just going to erase some edge of my plate here just to make it a little bit lighter so I have some really light area and really dark area that's going to give me some good values and help my plate look much more rounded so I'm going to do that and then on the top of my plate I'm going to make some 
erase some old, right along the edge. It's, just, it's like drawing lines with your eraser is kind of what you're doing. Taking off just a hint of that. Most of the cookies are going to cover this anyway, but that just gives you your values a little more a light and dark, um, that nice contrast. So once you finish that, you can go ahead and um, cut out your plate. And then we can start arranging it on our background. Okay. So once your plate is finished, you can go ahead and pull out your black construction paper and kind of decide where you're going to place your plate. I don't do it all the way to the bottom. I'm going to create a table for it to sit on. So I'm probably just going to do it about right there because I want room to stack my cookies on top. So I'm going to go ahead and glue it there. So once you've decided where you're going to put it, you can go ahead and spread some glue on the back and stick it right on your, place it right on your black paper there. Uh, it looks so nice against that black background. All right, so before we do the cookies, so let's finish our table and our um, plate and then we'll do our cookies. So I use a white colored pencil for this next part because it shows up really well on black. So I'm gonna go ahead and draw a, a line across about maybe in the middle somewhere along your plate so straight across there and then I'm going to skip over the plate and then draw it straight on the other side this looks makes it look like your plate is sitting on something and no longer just floating on the paper but we want to create that shadow look so this time we're going to fill in the light areas and let the black paper be the shadow kind of a backwards process there so what I do is I, I like to use the side of my lead. So I just use the side of my lead to color in my table. It gives a nice smooth look and I like how that looks. And I'm gonna color the direction of my paper. I'm not gonna color this way because my table is running this direction. So horizontal across my paper. So I'm gonna do it that way. Now, I am going to leave a little bit of black underneath my plate as a shadow. So see how I left a little strip of black? And then when I get up to the corner here, I'm just gonna go st straight across with my pencil real lightly there. And then I'm gonna go up a little bit and go straight across. So I have two lines there. And now I'm gonna color on both sides of those lines. Get sharpen my pencil. There we go. And that way I'm gonna have a really nice shadow that I made out of my paper and I'm actually filling in the light areas with my white colored pencil. If you don't have white, you could use a really light gray or a yellow, any bright color would work for this really well. I just love how the white looks. And then I, to make my light areas really light, I'm just gonna put some heavy pressure on my white pencil just to lighten that up a little bit where the light is hitting my table. Maybe down here just a little bit and along the edge over here on the other side. There, and that just gives me a little more um, contrast in my values doing that. All right, and now I did wanna add a little bit of more dark shadow on my plate. If you have a black, this is where a black pencil would work really well now. I'm actually gonna use, I don't have a black one with me as I mentioned earlier. I'm gonna use a super dark blue one to do this. So I'm just gonna, add some more and you, you, know, you don't want to press down too hard but you just want to add a little bit of black to that just to give it a teeny bit more shadow a little bit more dark to your um so i'm using medium pressure not super heavy pressure just a little bit of like a medium pressure there we go and look at how that just made that a little bit darker even and adding just a little more value and I might just add a little bit more to the edges of my plate there, that impression, there we go. Now, once that is finished, you can arrange your cookies and I would arrange them before you glue them down. I kind of like this for a composition for a still life. You kind of wanna uh, 
something that looks really cool. And I like to, since it's a simple object, I try to make it almost look like a triangle shape. So I kind of want that triangle shape of a composition. So I'm going to go ahead and I don't want to just put them perfectly stacked. I want to make it kind of interesting to look at. So I might put one cookie off to the side just a little bit. And I always place them right in that center part of my plate. I don't want to set them here because then it looks like it's teetering on the edge. But I want them to look like they're securely on my plate. So I, that's why I place them in the middle of that top area. So let's see. I've got some great cookies here. I might like make one lean just a little bit. Maybe this one's over this way precariously stacked together. And then I might take, here's one more. And then I might take one cookie and I just kind of lean it here on the side like it's leaning against the stack. I love that composition. I think it looks really cool. Kind of fun to look at, some teetering cookies there on my plate. Um, very cool. So once you have that, I just slide them off to the side and I'm gonna glue them down in place. And we are almost finished. Just have to finish gluing them and adding a teeny bit more shadow. So just a couple minutes more and we will be finished with this fun project. Of course, I like all our projects, so they're all fun to me. Trying all these different art mediums and topics. All right, this helps us kind of see what we really like to do, too. I'm going to teeter this one close to what I had it. This is a good time. If you need to change it, you can change it a little bit. If you, if I can't quite remember exactly how it was, but that's okay. I'm going to get it really close to what it was. I think that was my sideways cookie there. You could put one on the table even, leaning against the plate, if you wanted to do that. Like one fell off. Or maybe you have even a bite out of your cookie. One cookie, that would be kind of cool to cut out some teeth shape out of your cookie and then have one look like it's got a bite out of it. Someone was sneaking a bite of cookie. All right, my last cookie, I'm gonna kind of lean it against the other cookies. Leaning it, sitting it on my plate all right, so the last step is this is where you want your black colored pencil again. Um, I'm going to go ahead and use my dark blue since I don't have the black. And I'm just going to add a little bit of shadow under my cookies. So see how, how it's kind of blending. There's not a nice definite difference between my cookie and my plate. Well, I'm going to create that by, remember our light source is coming from this direction. So it's going to be this way. So it's going to be underneath the cookie. I'm going to have some shadow. So I'm just going to color a dark line underneath my cookie and this cookie is going to create a shadow a little bit from there leaning and I might have a little shadow up there too just a little bit there that'll just help separate that a little bit and make it look cool having that shadow look so there now you've got that created that shadow now there's a nice separation where my cookie is not so blending into my plate you can kind of tell a better difference that contrast between your cookie and your plate. So you can feel free to put a background on there if you want. You could draw a pattern if you want. I like black because it just makes my cookies pop off my paper a little better, makes them stand out. So I prefer a black background, but you're, you can be creative with that if you would like. So that is our project for today. Thank you for joining me. This was a lot of fun. Um, feel free to always send me a picture of your finished project. I would love to see it. Have a wonderful day.